What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? I'm Chanda D, your Techno Dad, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over a few items you need to think about when picking a subwoofer. Specifically, should you go ported or sealed? And we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Chana, and I've been into home theater for about 25 years now, and I'm also a working DJ and music producer. So if you want to learn about receivers, amplifiers, speakers, and subwoofers, you've come to the right place, and you should consider subscribing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I've been getting asked this question quite a bit lately. Which subwoofer type should you buy, a ported subwoofer or a sealed subwoofer? And I think that depends on two things. The first is what kind of content you're listening or watching, and what size your room is. Now, if you haven't seen my video on how to choose the proper subwoofer per room size, I'll link that down in the description and with a card on top so you guys can check that out when you need to. Now, one of the things I hear a lot is that if you're into music, you should get a sealed subwoofer, and if you're into home theater or you watch more movies and TV, you should go with the ported subwoofer. Now, honestly, I don't think that's 100% right, and we'll get to that in a minute, okay? Because there's a good explanation for that. First, why don't we get into the pros and cons of each type. So as far as the sealed subwoofer is concerned, the pro is that it's smaller, it's got tight and accurate bass, meaning if you're listening to music, like some heavy metal and they got double bass drums going, it's going to keep up, okay? Because it's sealed, it's pressurized, and that, that woofer is going back and forth really, really quickly. That's what's meant by accurate uh, bass response in a sealed subwoofer. Another pro for the sealed subwoofer is its size. It's going to have a drastically, drastically smaller box and therefore a smaller footprint than its ported counterpart. Now the biggest con of the sealed subwoofer is that you're going to need a lot more power to get the same rumble, the same bass, uh, the same SPL at lower frequencies as a ported subwoofer. Now let's move on to the ported subwoofer and its pros. Well first, it needs less power to get to the same bass level or SPL in lower frequencies because it has the ports and you just don't need as much power. Fantastic. Now another pro of the ported subwoofer is the low end bass extension. Now that's gonna be great for movies and TVs, especially when you've got um, a big rumbling scene like an explosion. Now if you guys have seen A Quiet Place, that is a movie that's got crazy LFE, crazy rumble. It's nuts, especially that like last scene. Oh man, crazy. Anyway, ported subwoofer is great for that. Now what are the downsides of a ported subwoofer? First of all, It's huge, like huge. I have the PB4000 by SVS upstairs and it's it's pretty big. I, I, I'll admit it, it's a little too big to be sitting in a living room, honestly. It's, it's pretty large. And you can see um, my other video about the unboxing, like I'm literally crawling through the box in that video. It's just huge, okay? So that's the biggest con for the ported subwoofer. And the second is that usually it's a lot slower meaning that tight bass that you need for uh, music isn't really there, especially when we're talking about um, non-synthesized music, like uh, you know some pop music, a lot of rock, metal, that kind of stuff. Once you figure out what size subwoofer you want to go with that's appropriate for your room, then you want to think about what kind of content you watch and listen to. Is it 60% TV and movies, 40% music? Is it 30% movie and TVs and 70% music? Something like that. You kind of have to split it up. Now going back to what I said earlier with is actually what a lot of people say is, you know, sealed subwoofer for music, port subwoofer for movies isn't really the case. Okay, now my background in uh, music production tells me that that's not 100% accurate. What I mean is a lot of music, especially hip hop and electronic music, and it's now branched over into pop music, they are using a lot of sub bass frequencies like a tuned 808 kick drum. Now, I know if you don't know what that means, that's totally cool. If you want an example of it, Look up that song by Demi Lovato. It's called Sorry Not Sorry. It's fairly new and definitely pop. Once the chorus kicks in, that bass, that is a tuned 808 kick drum 
and that's using a lot of sub, like sub frequencies, not subwoofer. Well, I mean, it's using a lot of subwoofer, but it's using a lot of sub frequencies, stuff that we can't hear. And in that situation, a ported subwoofer might be better than a sealed subwoofer. In a lot of hip hop, a ported subwoofer might be better than a sealed. And in a lot of uh, electronic music, same thing. So it's hard to say like a sealed subwoofer is good for music and on the flip side, a ported subwoofer is better for home theater. I think it's a balance that you have to find with your content and how you watch and your room size. It's really kind of hard to tell and it's hard to advise, especially since I don't know what you guys listen to most of the time. Now, one of the cool things about going to CES is that I got to listen to a bunch of different speaker setups that I cannot even afford, okay? I cannot even begin to think about it unless I wanted to sell a car or two. So I went to the audio control booth, which is uh, audio control makes uh, expensive processors and amplifiers, and they had a 5.2 Dyn Audio Evoke system. Now I gotta tell you guys, this system sounded awesome. Like awesome. I think it was, they said around $12,000. Now the subwoofers they were using, they were using two of them, and each one has a 9.4 inch, I guess we could say 9.5 inch woofer, right? So two of those, uh, facing opposite directions and they're self-powered I think 500 watts and I got to tell you guys the bass sounded phenomenal in this suite bottom line is they were playing a concert by the who and the bass was tight it was punchy it did everything it needed to do and then they switched to Mission Impossible Fallout and it was the helicopter like chase scene or whatever and that was insane these little subwoofers were doing so much and in, and I was saying to myself, I'm like, this is giving the same experience as that big SVS PB4000 that I have in my living room. And so when I went home, I looked it up. That sub six or whatever they call it, it's, it's super expensive. Let's just put that out there. It's expensive. It's like almost $3,000. However, it's got these uh, 25 centimeter drivers, which are 9.4 inches. There's two of them, 500 watts RMS, this little subwoofer goes down to 16 hertz. 16 hertz. When comparing that to the SVS PB4000, it also goes down to 16 hertz in standard mode. What I was feeling and experiencing in that room at CES was exactly what I was experiencing in my home because I actually just watched the movie. So I got to hear it on both a large ported subwoofer and a very tiny sealed dual nine and a half inch driver, you know, Dyn Audio. Yes, they had two of them. So that's about $6,000 just in base in that room. Crazy. I told you, it's expensive. But here's a situation where I have a very small sealed subwoofer that actually mimics the same frequency response. I was getting the same experience with that sealed subwoofer as the big, big ported one. Now when I say small, this subwoofer is 18 by 23 by 10 and the SVS PB4000 is 20 by 23 by 30. So we're talking a large, large difference in size and one sealed, one's ported and we're getting the same frequency response pretty much. So, you know, going ported or sealed, that's really a tough question to answer, especially if I don't know your room and if I don't know what kind of content you're watching or listening to. And that's something that you definitely need to think about. So now that I can relay all that information to you guys, I guess the biggest question is, well, how am I to know which is gonna sound best in my room? And the only answer to that, try them in your room. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. I know it's an expensive endeavor. Let's say you're looking at a $500 subwoofer. And yeah, you gotta buy two. You gotta spend $1,000, buy them both, figure out which one you like the best, then return the one you don't want. Simple as that, I know, it's expensive, but if you want that like clarity of which one is better, that's really the only way you're gonna find out. Now luckily companies like RSL and SVS have in-home trials. I believe RSL's is 30 day and SVS has a 45 day. So that's kind of cool. And I know companies like Crutchfield offer a 60 day uh, return policy, so that's even better. So make sure when you're trying to figure out if you want a sealed or ported subwoofer, you try them in your house if possible. I know some of you are on a tight budget and you're like, dude, I can't just spend a thousand dollars. No, I totally get it. I totally get it. 
So, you know, you know, try one, return it, try another one. If you like it, keep it. If you liked it better than the other one, keep it. If you didn't like it better than the other one, return it and buy the other one back again. I mean, you know, they have these return policies for a reason. You know, it's it's about time we start using it. As consumers, we have the right, right? That, that's what I say. But anyway, if you can try it in your home, that's going to be the best way to figure out which one is better for your room, is to try them out. Okay, so now to just kind of go over everything, just because you listen to more music doesn't mean a sealed subwoofer is better for you. A ported one could be better depending on the music you're listening to. As far as a ported subwoofer is concerned, it's large, but it is very efficient and you get that super crazy rumble on those big LFV moments in your content like explosions or you know like in a quiet place where it's just shaking the crap out of everything even Dunkirk was just really 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 crazy and intense with that big big subwoofer at the same time you could go from a 13 inch driver to two tens in sealed enclosures that might give you that same experience of course it's all dependent on your room and your content so that's kind of it as far as you know, when you ask or you're trying to figure out which one should I get, it's a tough question to answer. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. If you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on whichever social media platform you like to use the most. Well, that's pretty much it guys. So uh, like the video, share the video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I am your techno dad and I'll see you next time.